We got a bullish call today in the payment space. Credit Suisse initiating Square and PayPal with an outperform rating, giving PayPal a target of $135, $84 price target for Square. We've made it our call of the day. Joe, give me PayPal first, the stock that you own. Reports on Tuesday, um, along with rather Wednesday, the 29th. MasterCard reports on Wednesday, PayPal reports on Wednesday, Visa reports on Thursday. Staying with PayPal, staying with MasterCard, I'm nervous about both of these names. Listen, Global Payments is a very compelling, bullish thesis right now. You could look at GPN, which is the actual global uh, payments stock. That stock is at an all-time high. So e-commerce, card processing, the combination of technology and software all bringing that together, the global expansion, it's a great story. But it's a story, okay, that's being driven by a lot of growth, a lot of momentum, and I do have concern going into the earnings report for both of these. And it doesn't mean I'm getting out, okay. but I'm concerned. And to your point before, I, I'm concerned. I'm not getting out. I'm not fearful of so, a crash. I'm Josh, if, if the analyst here says that Square stands apart, why is the stock been in the dumpster? Yeah. What's the, up with that? The chart's a mess. I don't, I, don't, I don't really know the reason for it, but I would tell you it's just now getting into that gap going back to August when it disappointed. I think August 1st or August 2nd, it was a 10-point drop from 80 to 70. Now it's back in that range. There's probably not a lot of resistance within the gap. I know a lot of traders who do this almost exclusively, um, try to trade these gap fills. It's not my, my cup of tea. I, I don't really have any special insight. Um, but PayPal chart is slightly less sloppy, but still, there's no real trend here. It looks like it's rallying back into resistance. I don't trust it. I'm long MasterCard. I'm with Joe in that trade. I've been there forever. Uh, no plans to get out, but I agree. Um, that's an extremely well-known, expensive, um, probably overbought stock. I just can't bring myself to get out MA of it. MA gets a price target bump today, by the way, to 350 Yeah, why not? From that's like a 32 <laughs> Well, listen, listen. <laughs> that's like a $32 stock going to 35 Like, when, when you have triple digits and, in some cases, quadruple digit share prices, people lose sight of, like, oh, my God, they think it's going to go up 80 points. You know, like, if this thing went up 25 points, it wouldn't be shocking. Um, I'm not saying I think it does right away, but I, I wouldn't be surprised. Look, we like payment systems in general, uh, and we tend to really like this space. I hear everyone saying this is well-owned. There's, you know, risk that we disappoint a I little bit next week, right? <laughs> it, it is hear well that? Yeah, 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 it's well-owned. Fair enough, but it's deserved. And I think this is kind of a bigger theme in the market. Some of the stuff that's well-owned deserves to be well-owned. Some of the stuff that's priced at a premium deserves that premium. And I really feel like this is one of those spaces. You know, we have a lot of momentum. There's still a lot of room for penetration in the U.S., outside of the U.S., for transition for consumers and B2B. So, you know, a little hiccup would probably be an opportunity to add. Let, me, not let me throw this one at you, though. I want to talk AXP, too. Go well, I was going to go Capital One. Okay. Broke out two Don't days. do that. Well, then we'll do AXP. Broke out two days ago, definitively, is now retesting that breakout on lighter volume. It's exactly what you want to see if you're a bull. Um, I think if it stays above uh, 102, uh, it's okay for a short-term trade, above 98, if you have a little bit more risk tolerance. Here's a stock with a 1.5% yield selling less than 10 times earnings. American Express is 15 times earnings with a lower yield. Um, and I don't think that their growth prospects are materially different. Um, both card issuers, both have may maybe AXP, slightly less at risk to delinquencies at the lower end. Fine. I'll accept that. I don't think that should account for a 50 percent discount in an earnings multiple. What, what am I missing? Yeah. Why, why is this what stock so much cheaper? Because Discover Financial had such a bad quarter and there's a little bit of a spillover effect to Capital One. I completely agree with you on Capital One. I think this is a good entry point. It's a name that I've owned in the past. Uh, in, they're in isolation. The 10th largest bank right. in America. We and, never talk about it. But <laughs> they're doing the right things. They're doing the right things in the technological spend. They're doing the right things in firming up the credit quality uh, of their lending. Uh, I think this stands out in isolation versus a Discover, which is bleeding today down 8%. If you think, if you think the consumer is good, like this should work. What about this Am year? Then Amex should too. Um, it's a little trickier because of all the corporate partnerships and when they lose one, the street hates it. When they, get, when they get one, the street loves it. Guidance was it should really work. good for American Express for the first time in multiple quarters. And the business spend hasn't even come back yet. Listen, I, I got out of this way too soon. I was out of the summer around 122. It's now above 130. Uh, the momentum looks strong on this. And it, it goes back to this growth versus value. 
a lot of all these stocks identify as growth. And right now, growth is overwhelmingly popular in the marketplace. It's a great pairs trade. Uh, sh short MasterCard, long uh, American Express or long capital. Well, the, like big, the big difference you have to acknowledge is American Express does use a balance sheet. MasterCard and Visa do not. That's a great part Discover of MasterCard does. and Visa. Capital One does. But right. using a balance sheet in this environment should work well, both because there's a little bit of steepness to the yield curve and even more so when you're talking about credit cards. Their funding rate, American Express, or anybody using a balance sheet is way lower than the rates that they charge on credit cards.